In the last video, we looked at creating value drawers, but limited the scope of the drawer for a struct and did not include classes. In this video, we're finally going to take a look at value drawers for classes, with the focus being on answering two questions, how and why. As mentioned earlier, there are some pitfalls that occur in terms of saving data and multi-selection. These come from the fact that classes are passed as references and not values. This means there is direct access to the class instance, and to catch any changes, Odin would need to scan each member every frame, which is not practical from a performance perspective. Whereas with values, we are working with a copy of the value, and any change must be assigned by Odin back to the mono behavior. And in the end, this all adds up to preventing Odin from knowing changes have been made to classes, so changes are not saved. This video is going to be a bit different. We'll start by looking at the wrong way to create a class drawer, and then reshape that code to do it in a more correct way. Since the wrong way is very similar to creating a drawer for a struct, we'll be starting with a wrong way already written. If you missed the last couple of videos, which explains much of this code, you may want to watch those first. The class that I'll be creating a drawer for is pretty simple and has three fields, a string, an integer, and a vector3. Let's take a look at the drawer that appears to work, with the emphasis there on the word appears. The drawer has three variables, one for each of the fields in the class. The drawer then adds a label to the inspector with the function prefix label. It then draws both the string and integer fields on the same line and draws the vector3 on the line below. And finally, the drawer then syncs the values from the inspector to the values in the class. We can test the functionality in Unity, and our first impression may be that everything is working correctly. That is until you close Unity and open it back up. And that's when you discover the changes in the inspector weren't being saved. Or if you have multiple instances of a class and you select more than one at a time, changes are only being made to one of those instances. Neither of these problems are very desirable, so let's fix the code and resolve both of these issues. The first thing we're going to do is change the variables. I'm going to pull them out of the draw property layout function and make them class-wide variables. We then need to change their type to inspector property and remove their initialized value. This fixes the earlier issue with saving and multi-selection by working with the Odin property system. This change of type will cause errors further down, but we'll get to those in a bit. We now need a way to get the values of these new variables, and we can do that in an initialize function. Inside the function, the command this.property.children, followed by square brackets, and the name of the field in quotes will return the inspector property. And we can do that for each of our variables. Next, we need to fix the errors. These errors are due to the change in type. We can fix the first error by changing text to text.valueentry.weaksmartValue. Do note that smart value, which we've used in previous videos, is strongly typed, and weak smart value is not, but otherwise, the two are identical. We need to make a similar change on the right hand side of the assignment, plus, we also need to cast the weak smart value to the type string so that the text field has the correct input type. We can make similar changes with a number variable as well, but this time casting the type to int. Since we are not doing anything special with the vector3 in terms of how we are drawing it, and we've converted our variables to inspector properties, we can simply call location.draw, and Odin will fully handle the drawing of the vector3. The last change is that we no longer need the last three lines that sync the inspector values to the values in the class, as that's already being done. If we let Unity compile, there are no visible changes made to our inspector, and everything still seems to work. However, if we were to change a value, close Unity, and reopen Unity, we'd find that the values are now being saved as expected. Or, if we had multiple instances, we'd find that multi-selection editing is working correctly. Now that more or less answers the question of how to make a custom drawer for a class. So let's move on to the question of why. Now there may be edge cases we haven't thought of, but in general, the answer to the question why you should make a custom drawer for a class is that you shouldn't. If you want to create a custom inspector for a class, it is far easier to simply add attributes to the class itself. After all, this is how most of us are already using Odin. In the case of third-party tools where you can't access the code directly, creating a custom property processor is a much better approach. So you might be asking, why did we create a video about something we think you shouldn't do? 
and there are a couple of reasons. First, there may be an edge case we haven't thought of, and this video may be useful to someone. Second, people do build drawers for classes and often struggle with the lack of saving or multi-selection. So now there is a resource showing how to avoid those common pitfalls if people think a custom drawer is the best solution for their project. So we hope this video was interesting or better yet useful for your project. And until next time, happy game designing.